hydrogen double bond is a carbon. It used to be carbonyl. What's on this carbon? Well, it's two H's. You can just draw it like that. It looks a little naked so if you want to show the two H's. Uh, either way, but that's it, right? Uh, you'll get this ending, but then it gets reduced. And so what happens? Two H's here becomes NH. And when you, add, when you add another H to that carbon, what does the carbon become? It becomes a methyl, CH3. Okay? So another route to make methamphetamine by a reductive amination approach is this primary amine and formaldehyde with, uh, you need something like sodium cyanoborhydride or, or analogous type reagent. Or the uh, P2P method uh, approach, the ketone using just methylamine as is starting to meet. Of course, this is also primary too, and in both cases, the primary amines are becoming secondary amines, and so in that regard, the amine is being alkylated by an indirect approach. Yes? Would uh, the P2P way be the more efficient way? Is that why, do you think that's why they fit on the show, or is it just because methyl? Uh, it could be just availability of these things. Is, is this more available than this? Um, it, it could be some very practical reasons. I don't see any chemical reasons why it's one, one route's better than the other. Methyl means a gas. Uh, formaldehyde is a gas. It may be able to be obtained in solution. These, these two strike materials look a little bit more reactive. This is going to be a little bit more pleasant to handle. Ketones are not as reactive as aldehyde. This is almost like a double aldehyde. Formaldehyde is pretty reactive. Electrophile and nucleophiles are going to react. Um, this is probably a more stable, more just well-behaved compound. Uh, this is a gas, but if you can get a tank, then the gas is easily controlled. Um, so I, I, this does look a little better to me over here. Uh, okay, how do we do on that? Uh, working backwards with the reductive amination approach. Okay. Now you could you could you, you said you tried to make this from benzene. Yeah, it was very difficult. Uh, well, I would back this up probably to the alcohol because if I had the alcohol, could you make the ketone? Did you get, go to the alcohol? I had. Um, I didn't, I had an alcohol, but I had to remove it. There were two alcohols. I started out with a... Um, I, can, I, I can look at your synthesis since you did that. I'd probably back this up to an alcohol, because if I know you had the alcohol, how would you make the ketone? <coughs> Oxidize it, right? With one of the big three, you can have... You want to show a specific reagent there. That's just an oxidation. <laughs> You gotta be careful though because you might oxidize a benzoic carbon and you might chew this off and just get benzoic acid. So you might be have to be careful here. <coughs> uh, well this here looks to me like probably a nucleophile carbon carbon OH, so I could back this up to maybe a Grignard and maybe That epoxide, Grignard adding here, and then proton comes from workup. I mean, this could come from bromobenzene, you react it with magnesium. Bromobenzene can come from bromidating benzene. Uh, you'd have to make that or get your hands on that. Uh, we lost Nick. Um, Okay, but that wasn't really asked there, but you could do that in terms of just some practice or thinking about it. Um, anytime you see a molecule, you can always just say, how would you synthesize that and sit down and try to do it? Uh, and then get someone to look at it. Um, okay. Okay, I've been doing a aldehyde ketone nomenclature. Yeah, we did uh, that there. Uh, If 
Anybody know that molecule up there? Can you see it? Anybody know that molecule? Probably don't know that I don't know that I would recognize it. But it's uh, testosterone. Testosterone. Oh, what does that own ending mean to you? Ketone. It contains a testosterone contains a ketone. Now you gotta be careful, not all owns contain ketones. Hydrozone does not contain a ketone. But it came from a ketone. Well, but it can also come from an aldehyde. But sometimes derivatives are named according to what they often come from. So, uh, testosterone has a ketone. Yeah? Uh, how about that compound? Anybody ever, anybody know that compound? What do you want to call that key? Uh, <coughs> uh, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> it's called penguin nose. <laughs> you can find it on Wikipedia. Yes, it's there. It's real. That's the name of it. That's a common name. Yeah, is that agree? Is that acceptable on exams? Uh, if I ever give you that, you can call it penguin no. How would you, what's the IPAC name for that? <coughs> More than that, tetramethyl. <laughs> How about three, four, four, five, tetramethyl, what? Cyclo... Hexanone. Hexanone. How about that? Yeah, look right. <laughs> That's probably the name you would want to give because you probably would not know penguinone. But it's, look up, if you type in penguinone on Wikipedia, that's, that's it. Okay. Everybody get it? Okay. Uh, also in the white sheet, there's a drug synthesis uh, using a reductive amination approach. Uh, right here. We have of the imine. It's not a strong acid. Um, and what are they doing? They're making this bond right. Uh, that's kind of like an endo. Making that bond right there, right? There's the amine. That carbon used to be aldehyde. Okay, you need to be able to envision, back it up, and see the imine, and then okay, where it came from. Uh, there's a couple other reactions. This is an alcohol oxidation. They're oxidizing it to the aldehyde. They're using some reagents we've never seen called a swern oxidation. You don't need to know that. What do we use? You want to go from alcohol to aldehyde? Um, PCC, pyridinium chlorochromate. We'll stop at aldehyde. Yes. Okay. There's other things that can do that. The swear oxidation is another, but again, we didn't cover that. So they're doing a selective oxidation. Uh, there's other things up there, uh, ester reduction. Down here, I didn't note it, but there, an alternative synthesis of the same compound, reductive amination. Take a look. Well, 
Here's 9 up here. I'll, we'll refer to that. 9 has this group here. What is that group there? It's sort of shown out, not just totally abbreviated and still condensed, though. What is that up there? Now it was 2. If the bromine was a methyl, what would that group be? It'd be a um, tosylate. It'd be a tosylate. That's called a brosylate. It's just a bromine instead of a methyl. Instead of a toluene, it's a bromobenzene. Okay. Now let's do tosylate. Uh, they're making the amine here by the azide, displacing that with the nucleophile, and then reducing the azide. It can be reduced with LAH. I showed that in organic one is an alternative way to make primary amines. So they're making the uh, amine that way. Down below, there's a variety of different things here. They're basically making the same compound different routes. Down here, they made this amine. This chemistry is pretty straightforward. Four is an ester. They hydrolyze the ester to the acid. They convert the acid to the amide. They're not sure reagents here. Maybe they discuss them in the text. The amide is being reduced to the amine. How would you do this? Can we just remove that oxygen? Yeah. We That's LAH. Okay. Primary amine. Then they're reacting it with nine, that brosylate. And what are they doing here, though? Here, instead of a reductive amination and, and going through the amine, what type of reaction are they doing here? They're just kicking off the, the brosylate or the tosylate. They're just doing a direct alkylation. The amine is acting as a nucleophile, just like the azide did up there. And you can do direct alkylations, but they sometimes can be problematic. That's why there's lots of alternatives, a lot of indirect routes. But they are showing a direct route there. Again, I don't know what type of yield they got. Uh, they call it an alternative approach, so it must have maybe have been better. But there's lots of ways to do things. Um, so again, it's an application, and if you really want to see what's going on, you've got to take the time to read it and then ask questions if you want, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you want to see the full paper, the reference is at the bottom. Organic Process Research and Development, OPRD. I think it's a great journal and very practical. That journal often takes small procedures on the research scale and turns them into manufacturing scale. And there's lots of issues going from small scale chemistry to then big scale chemistry. And then you can look at some of the procedures in this journal and instead of weighing out maybe 100 milligrams of a compound or 0.5 grams, they're weighing out like 25 kilograms. And instead of adding 10 milliliters of solvent, they add in like 28 liters. Okay? They're doing beyond bucket chemistry. They got big old flasks. Like. Okay. Uh, basically, there's a variety of applications. We need to move ahead. Uh, the last thing on the green sheet is the Wittig reaction. You said this miscellaneous reaction, but it's a very important reaction. And we'll be doing the lab on the Wittig when we come back from break. Uh, and I'm going to cover the Wittig by video only. I may get that posted today or I may not get it posted to more after the break. Like by the Monday we come back. Um, but um, you should watch the Vidic video and certainly before the lab. Uh, but that will be our next lab when we come back from break. Okay. Um, okay, we're moving into the next handout. Is that right? Any questions up to this point? Aldehyde ketone chemistry. Okay, <coughs> we, we focused on the carbonyl. With this handout, which may be our last handout for the course. I think it might be. I don't I can't quite remember if there's another small one. Um, 
we're going to move next door. Okay. Aldehydes, ketones, carbonyl, reacting here. But now we're going to move next door and look at this alpha carbon, the carbon next to the carbonyl. We can do chemistry over here. All right? Alpha carbonyl chemistry. And we will see, remember enols? So enols are organic one when we hydrate the alkynes to enol. And what did the enol then do? Enols are typically not stable. They undergo a process called tautomerization. tautomerization. You know the mechanism for tautomerization? Oreo. Oreo. Okay. You, some of you did not have me, but Oreo is a mnemonic that I don't know who created. To remember the tautomerization mechanism. All right. Uh, we may mention that later. But that's the type of chemistry we're going to get into. Okay. Not only enols, but the anion of enols is called an enolate. All right. So, lots of chemistry that we can do. Because of the carbonyl, but it's next door. Okay, the first thing we want to understand is acidity of sp3 hydrogens adjacent alpha to the carbonyl or cyano group. Um, the pKa of these alpha hydrogens on the alpha carbon, see, so compared to the carbonyl, the first carbon's alpha, the next carbon's beta, that way. This, this compound has two alpha carbons, one here, one here. But this alpha carbon does not have any H's. So I'm talking about those, those H's. And H is alpha to a uh, ketone or aldehyde. But aldehyde has a problem. These have a pKa of about 20. Aldehyde has a similar pKa. The problem is, if you try to do the chem this chemistry with aldehydes, aldehydes tend to be so electrophilic, so reactive at the carbonyl, it's hard to do chemistry next door. Ketones are less reactive. Why is that? At the carbonyl. Why is a... Which carbonyl is going to be more prone to being attacked by a nucleophile? Aldehyde. Aldehyde. This has two donating groups. And so any partial positive that is built up here by the dipole is sort of quenched by the donation. That's not totally quenched. This is still electrophilic. It will react with nucleophiles. But down here, you only have one R group donating. And so there's not as much quenching of that positive charge by uh, the donation from the carbon. Analogous to that, how reactive do you think formaldehyde would be compared to these? Even more reactive because there's no R group at all. Lots of partial positive on that carbon. Less here and even less here. But there is a pretty good distinction between aldehydes and ketones. The chemistry is analogous. They both do the same thing. They both make amines. It just tends to be a little bit more difficult to make an amine of a ketone. A little bit more difficult, but you can do it. Where aldehydes, the chemistry tends to be pretty, pretty quicker, quick and easy. Okay. Again, otherwise, aldehyde ketone chemistry is the same. You get, you do the same things with it. So, you don't often see aldehydes here because they're, they're so reactive that they do carbonyl chemistry, and it's harder to do this alpha chemistry. So that's why I didn't show it aldehyde. Ketone is about 20. Here's a ketone, symmetrical ketone, alpha CH is on both sides, about 20. Esters, the alpha CHs are not quite as acidic. First off, why are these are acidic at all? What's the pKa of a regular CH, just like hexane or something? What's, what's the P? P, uh, pKa of these H's. About 40 or greater. 
And that's sort of the max of the just bad, not as the. Why are these H's a little bit more acidic? Right, because of resonance. We're going to get um, you can make anion when we remove an H. If this acts as an acid, if something if a base takes the H, right, we'll be left with this. That's resonance stabilized. And we will have resonance structure. Looks like this, yeah. And so the anion is delocalized. It's spread out. That's, that's stabilizing. But it's spread out onto what type of atom? It's spread out onto an oxygen, which can really handle it. By the way, this is called an enolate. Enolate anion. All enolate anions. All enolates are anions. If there was an H here on this oxygen and it was all neutral, what would that be called? An enol. An enol. The enolate is the anion of an enol. Okay? What's the major resonance structure of the enolate here? This, this is major, correct? Most of the charge is sitting on the oxygen. Exactly. The, the, the true structure is a hybrid of these. But if you ever see that, that's enolate. I mean, neither one is strictly correct, but it's okay. That's the resonance discussion question. So does that mean there's an N-amine like anion, like a version of the analyte, or anything else? Uh, you don't see that as often. Okay. Because with nitrogen, it's not going to be as acidic. You just don't see that as as often. And I don't know that the exact name of that would be, but. I think it's certainly possible. Uh, we're just going to see carbonyl versions, um, unless it's in some unique mechanism. Which, yeah. okay? Um, why is the ester CH alpha CH is not as acidic? Because this has an oxygen over here that's doing what? It's pumping electrons into the carbonyl. If you had an oxygen over here pumping electrons into the carbonyl, these electrons are not going to be able to come in here as much. Okay? This donation to the carbonyl, then the anion here would not be as stabilized. Okay? Esters are not quite as acidic, CH. Nitriles, now this is a CN group, right? Just shown fully. These are also have some acidity because the anion would be resonance stabilized. You should show, show resonance. The charge can be delocalized onto nitrogen, but since nitrogen is not as electronegative as oxygen, it's not going to be as good as when it's oxygen. So it's not quite as acidic. Now we can compare these to other acids, carboxylic acid, which by the way, right, acid, carboxylic acid, yeah? Carbonyl, the atom next door has an H. Carbonyl, the atom next door has an H. It's just here the, the atom next door is a carbon. We're here the atom next door is oxygen. Making anion here very easily. And then we can do resonance PKF5. Making anion here, you can also do, but it's not as acidic because it's some of the charges on carbon. Okay? Amides, we never talked about their acidity. But an amide is more acidic than this because here the charge is on nitrogen, here it's on carbon. So it's a little bit more acidic. And then there's your compound, just like this. 
Make sense? So we're just going from oxygen, nitrogen, to carbon. And so we get less acidic as we go there. Enol en enolate tautomers and mechanism for tautomerization between the two. Oreo. Okay, anytime you have an aldehyde or ketone, it's always potentially, potentially in equilibrium with the enol. And so that's an enol, right? It's only going to be on that side over there because you're not going to put a double bond here because that carbon cannot have five bonds. Okay? This is really organic one review. This can be catalyzed by H plus or hydroxide, acid or base. Uh, this is called the carbonyl form. Sometimes it's called the keto form. Was it the ketone? Or if it was an aldehyde, you would maybe call it the aldehyde version. But again, the ketones tend to be just the most common here. Um, also, this is also called the CH tautomer because the H is here on the carbon, CH, where in this tautomer, the H that's getting moved, so there's the H that's getting moved. What's the definition of a tautomer? One H and one pi bond. Relocation of a single H in a pi bond. And at least one pi bond. It could be multiple pi bonds. We have re relocated <coughs> one hydrogen and the pi bond. The pi bond is between C and the O. Now the pi bond is between C and C. This would be called the eno enol form or sometimes the OH tautomer. There's your definition of tautomer. So on organic one. Uh, we can do uh, mechanism, yeah. We need a reminder of the tautomerization mechanism. Let's do it under basic conditions. Okay. Basic conditions. Got hydroxide. These electrons take the H, stay behind. I mean, we've already kind of showed structure here that would give anion right plus water. What does Oreo stand for, those that know Oreo? Off resonance on. Depends on if you're under basic or acidic conditions. If you're under basic conditions, what's the first O? Off. Off. Because under basic conditions, bases take H's off. What did we just do to our substrate? Took H off. H off. We took it off. Now what do we do here? Resonance. Resonance. Off resonance. The resonance we've already shown for the enolate. Um, right? Boom. Isn't that the resonance structure of the enolate? Off. RE for resonance. And then what's the last O stand for here? On. On. Put the H back on. What can supply the H? The water. The water can. Take the H here. We get that. And what did we recreate? The hydroxide. We remade hydroxide. Catalyst reform. We just did a tautomerization using hydroxide as catalyst. What did we do in the last step? We put the H back on. 
That's the final O of Oreo. If we were doing acidic conditions here, what would the first O stand for? On. On, because under acidic conditions you put protons on. You would do resonance and then the final O would be off. Try the tautomerization mechanism under acidic conditions on your own. As we've said before, if you're under basic conditions, your, intermediate, your intermediates in your mechanism are, tend to be negatively charged. If you're under acidic conditions, your intermediates in your mechanisms are going to be positively charged. typically positively charged. Try it on your own. Or Oreo under acidic conditions. Now, any aldehyde or ketone exists in equilibrium with phenol. But typically, the carbonyl form is highly favored. Okay? Highly favored. So the equilibrium is typically like this. See the other arrow going the other way? All right? Typically. There are some cases where enols are more favored than that. Uh, let's see what's next here. Question here. Which of the following are enol forms of the compound shown in the box? Think about that. How many enol tautomers are possible? A couple of homework questions there, okay? You take some time to look at those and we'll look back at those later. Examples of the enol form being favored. Look at the first two, the tautomers here. Are those tautomers? Got to be able to recognize tautomers. Yeah. They are. Which one's going to be favored? The carbonyl tautomer, the uh, CH tautomer, or the OH tautomer? OH. Why OH? Because it's aromatic. It's, yeah, that is. Isn't it like the two double bonds, like the energy is like a lot higher? Well, it's aromatic. The other one's aromatic, meaning it's got this unusual stability, yes, compared to the other one. The other one, we, the name of this compound is phenol, right? How does phenol exist? On the right. You could actually consider that as, a, as an enol here. And you can actually show a carbonyl tautomer of that. But the OH tautomer is highly favored here. One on the right. This is called a diketone. It's actually called a 1,3 diketone because that's a relationship. If you call that 1, then that's 3. Of course, in terms of true nomenclature, that's 1, that's 2. But if the 1,3 refers to if something is 1, the other one is 3. 1,3 diketones are known to matrix primarily exist like this, where one of the carbonyls is in the enol form with the others in the keto form. So this is a case where enol is favored. Why is this favored over that? Conjugation. Because here, you've got conjugation all the way through here. There, it's two separate pi, pi bonds. Now this equilibrium can be determined by NMR. You actually see, if you run the NMR in this compound, it'll look like a, an impure mixture. Because you really got both tautomers there. But this one will this one predominates. And by the way, you cannot purify that compound. There's no way to get this without that. Think about it. If you were to isolate this. It's just going to do this to you, and it's going to form 15% of that. There's no way to keep this from forming. And that's how it exists. Okay. Um, what's another reason this is favored? Conjugation. Anybody see another reason why that structure is favored? Resonance. 
Well, resonance and conjugation are pretty much the same thing. More substitutions in the alkene. Anybody see another reason? Oh, um, hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen and intramolecular hydrogen bonding. Now, hydrogen bond is a type of IMF, but it's a type of bonding. It's a strong interaction. It's not a full covalent bond. Bonding's good. If bonding is good, what about a partial bond? Okay. Does that keep that H from being slightly acidic? <coughs> Does that exist 85% when it, without that hydrogen bond? It would be kind of acidic, right? I'm not quite sure. I uh, we're up against time here. We're out of time. See some of you in lab this afternoon. Uh, uh, and have a good week, guys. Be safe.